In this chapter, we'll return to audio recording and look at some of the advanced features in Cubase. We'll explore the project folder contents, using track presets to overdub an electric and bass guitar, the VST amp rack, how to punch in and punch out, vocal comping using the lanes feature, and vocal editing using Vary Audio. Let's take a moment and look at what's changed inside the project folder. You can see that Cubase has automatically created a lot of files here. The audio folder is a copy of every take. The images folder has peak files, which are waveform images for every take. There are backup files from every autosave, and there's also an edits folder to save audio files, which we've modified. Finally, there's the main Cubase project file, which has the .cpr extension. All of these files and folders are necessary for your project to work, and we'll look at how to handle them in a later chapter. Okay, it's time to add our electric guitar part. Open the project menu and select Add Track, and then choose Audio. Let's take a closer look at our options in the Add Audio Track window. The selections for count, configuration, and speakers all look good. Click on the Browse button here, and use the Window Layout tool to display the filters and previewer panes. The Add Audio Track window has now become a small version of Media Bay to help us search for track presets. Track presets are tracks which have been pre-configured for various types of material. You can see that Steinberg provides a lot of presets to get you going. Fortunately, they provide you with some powerful filtering tools to find what you need quickly. The Filters pane on the left is easy to use. The Filters pane is where you set up your search criteria. The results pane on the right displays everything that matches those criteria. First, select which type of filter you want, attribute or logical. Let's start with attribute. The filters pane now presents five columns of attributes, such as category and style. Begin on the left and select category of instrument. For our example, we want guitar plucked. Notice that some of the categories are grayed out. This means that there are no results that match that category. For example, there are no presets for accordion. Click on Guitar, Plucked, and notice that the number of results decreases because we've limited our search. Now go to the Style column and select Jazz. And now our results pane is down to only a few choices. You can also adjust the column headings like this. You have the option to use the filter in logical mode. Let's search for Name, Matches, Single Coil, and watch how the results pane reacts. You can use this button to reset filters if you want to start over. Let's pick Jazz Guitar Single Coil and click Add Track. You can see that Cubase has created a new audio track below the previously selected track. To see how this track is configured, open the Edit Channel Settings by clicking on the E button in that track. You can see that there are three insert effects added to help us get close to a single coil jazz guitar sound. They are the Vintage Compressor, Amp Simulator, and Studio EQ. Of course, a track preset is only your starting point. You can adjust all of the track setting to suit your music. Let's rename our track simply Lead Guitar, and we'll try a take. For this pass, we'll have our musician, Dave, plug directly into the MR816 audio interface. No amp, no microphone. This will help demonstrate how much tone and character Cubase can deliver. Now since the lead guitar only plays during the middle of the song, we'll start this take about eight bars before the solo. This should give Dave enough time to get into the groove. 
Since we're not using a microphone, he can simply use the control room monitors and play along with the song. Nice job, Dave. Love those double bends. Now, to make it easy to come back to this same spot, let's take a moment to create a marker track. A marker track is used for navigating around your project. Select the project menu and add track, then select marker track. You can see that Cubase added a marker track below our previously selected track. But I prefer to have the marker track at the very top of the project window. To fix this, I simply click and hold the marker track and then drag it. The green line shows where the track will be dropped. Now I'll create markers for the start, end, and solo sections of the song. Position the cursor at the start of the song and click Add Marker. Do the same thing for the end of the song. Notice that the marker number automatically increases. Now I'll position the cursor a few bars ahead of the guitar solo and click Add Marker. Marker number one should always go at the start of the song and marker number two at the end. To help keep things straight, I'm going to rename marker number three and give it a unique color. To do this, click on the E in the marker track or press Command or Control M. This will open the marker window. Here I can type in new positions, set section lengths if we're using cycle markers, and enter a description. Cycle markers are covered in the operation manual. Let's call this Guitar Solo. Finally, back in the project window, we'll select marker number three, then open the color palette and click on Yellow. You can see that when another marker is selected, marker three now displays bright yellow. Let's try a few more track presets to see how you can quickly change the tone and character of Dave's performance. Wow, that's interesting, but probably too much for this song. Okay, sounds like we were right the first time. Let's use the VST amp rack to make a few adjustments. First, open the editor for the lead guitar track. Now let's replace the amp simulator plugin with the VST amp rack plugin. This very cool plugin gives you all the tools a guitarist could want. First, make sure to open the extended display by clicking on the light gray icon at the top of the cabinet. There are six tabs at the top of the cabinet that let you select pre-effects, amplifiers, cabinets, post effects, microphone position, and a master section. Microphone position gives you a choice between a condenser mic or a dynamic mic, distance from the cabinet, and whether or not the microphone is on axis or off axis. Of course, you still have the standard tone controls on the face of the unit. You can click these icons at the side to see your pre and post effects. And you can click this lock icon to link or unlink the amplifier and the cabinet selections. When all your settings are dialed in, 
you have the option to switch back to the Hide Extended Display to save space. Use the cube icon to save your settings as a preset. Now, let's store all of this as our own track preset. Right-click or Command-click on the track and select Save Track Preset. Let's name this one Dave's Guitar. Now we can quickly recall these settings on future projects. Our song is coming along, but we really need a bass guitar to lock down the rhythm section. First, we'll create a new audio track for the bass using a track preset. Now we'll have Carter plug his bass directly into the audio interface and get some levels. OK, let's give it a try. Pretty good, but there was one rough spot in the middle. Let's use punch in and punch out to clean it up. Now position the left locator at the spot where you want to punch in and begin replacing the bass. Then position the right locator where you want the overdubbing or punch in to stop. This is known as punching out. You engage the punch in feature by pressing the I key or clicking here on the transport panel. Engage the punch out feature by pressing the O key on the keyboard or clicking here on the transport panel. Make sure that the record enable function is armed for the target track. Place the cursor ahead of the punch in point, and now when we press play, Carter will play along and Cubase will automatically punch him in and out at our locator positions, like this. Terrific. Nice job, Carter. Let's turn our attention back to vocals. We'll have Andrew lay down a few different harmony parts. We'll use cycle recording and the lanes feature to capture several takes in a row. Then we'll build a composite performance known as comping. Create a new audio track. Click on the Show Lanes icon. Position the locators to either side of the target section, leaving enough room to get ready for each take. Enable the transport cycle by clicking here. Record enable the track, and when we click record, Cubase will capture the audio, then continue to cycle between the locators, laying down each new pass in its own lane, like this. Don't hide my friend. Don't hide my friend. Now we have each pass recorded into a separate lane. We can use the Comp tool to click and drag over the audio we want to keep. The Comp tool automatically creates slices at either end of the section. Those slices or cuts are applied to all the audio in this folder track. Then simply click on those portions you want to hear. The muted sections are shown in light gray. Watch how only the selected portions of each lane play back. Don't hide, my friend. Once our composite performance is defined, we can use the Bounce selection to create one seamless waveform. The last thing we're going to cover in this tutorial is using Vary Audio to edit and correct the vocal performance. Start by double-clicking the part you want to work on. This opens the Sample Editor. The Sample Editor is where you make all kinds of changes to your audio waveform. For now, we'll just look at how to make pitch changes using Vary Audio. There are six tabs in the inspector at the left edge of the screen. Click on Vary Audio. Select Pitch and Warp by clicking on the arrowhead. Cubase will analyze the waveform and break it into segments based on musical pitch. A piano roll guide appears toward the left side as a visual reminder of pitch. Inside each box or segment is a line representing the pitch, and you can click and drag a segment to change its pitch. You can use Quantize Pitch and Straighten Pitch to further adjust the accuracy of the performance. Subtle changes can be impossible to detect while radical pitch shifts may result in audible artifacts. Let's make a few minor edits. OK, let's move on to Chapter 7 where we'll see how to use Vary Audio to create a harmony part. Then we'll look at how to work with multi-track drums 
introduce MediaBay and explore how to integrate loops. Mm -hmm.